So the point of tonight's event was to drink some beer, uh, talk about some science, but I have the yeah. 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 yeah! But I have the idea that why don't we drink some beer and talk about some beer at the very same time. It's a two for one on your beer tonight. So what we're gonna do, let me set the situation up for you. We got a planet. Let's call it Mars. It's the fourth planet from the sun. It's pretty cool. We also have something else called beer. Beer is delicious. <laughs> One day we're going to put humans on Mars, and we want those humans to be able to drink beer. Yes. But there's no beer on Mars right now, so how are we going to get that beer onto that red planet? Shoot it through a gun. Shoot it through a gun. That's a rather inefficient beer delivery mechanism, I'm afraid. So, before we get started, I want to offer, I want to offer a couple of disclaimers. Number one, I've never brewed beer. And I know that's kind of a cardinal sin around here, but I'll have to live with the shame and sorrow myself. Uh, number two, I've never been to Mars. I know, shocking. So, I hope that together we can move past these two personal failings and try to get some beer on Mars. And so as I sat down to start thinking about this topic, I did what any good modern scientist would do. I went to Wikipedia. <laughs> and it turns out that you need four things in order to brew beer. You need water. If you're holding a beer right now, most of what you're holding is water. You need some sort of grain. We typically use barley here in the US, but we know that you can make beer out of wheat, and you can actually make beer out of pretty much any grain. You need some yeast. That yeast eats up those delicious sugars embedded within the barley, and it turns it into even more delicious alcohol. <laughs> the whole reason that we drink beer in the first place. I'm gonna sit this close to the down. <laughs> and then finally, you need some hops. Hops are what give beer its distinctive flavor. And so if we want to brew beer on Mars, we gotta find all four of these things on Mars. But there's just one problem. <coughs> None of these things are actually found on Mars. This is an impediment to brewing beer. There's got to be yeast on Mars. Yeah, we're not, we're not sure about yeast. There's yet. fucking yeast on Mars. Well, we haven't found it yet. There's only yeast at some point. So, if we want to brew real. It's the easiest one to find. If we want to brew real, genuine Martian beer, we're going to have to bring these things from Earth. And we got one of two ways to do that. We can either build a big ass ship and put everything we need inside of it. All the people, all the food, all the water, all the scientific equipment, all the beer brewing ingredients. This has been sort of derisively called the Battlestar Galactica plan for going to Mars. Yes! Yes! So say we all. <laughs> Unfortunately, it'd probably be cheaper just to buy the Battlestar Galactica than it would be to build one of these ships. And so today we think of sort of a more efficient way of getting to Mars. And that's to send the things we need kind of one by one in the order that makes the most logistic sense and the order that also makes the most sense for the safety of our astronauts. And this allows us to make use of a lot of knowledge and technology we've already built here on Earth. In the last 50 years, we've gotten really, really good at building things in labs Strapping them to rockets and shooting them to other planets. And so why don't we use that and build stuff in labs to go to Mars, strap it to a rocket, and shoot it to another planet. This also would save us a lot of money. It's still a really big, really pricey endeavor, but this is within the range of other giant exploration projects we've had. Things like going to the moon or building the International Space Station. Now, whichever one of these two things we choose, there's sort of a fundamental equation that governs how space exploration works. And I'm going to give you a, a quick peek at it here. Looks like this. Weight equals money. The biggest trouble with getting things into space is how much they weigh. Because it turns out it's really difficult to build rockets that can send a lot of stuff far out into space. And so we have to be very picky and very choosy about what we send into space. In fact, 
If we take the largest rocket that flies today, the Delta IV Heavy, built by rockets. Wait, why did we get some of those off? of water to produce. Now, some of you out there I see have beers in your hands, and you're probably sitting there looking at it wondering, hmm, this doesn't feel like 300 pounds. And if you're not the Hulk, then you're absolutely right. Because almost all of the water that we use to make beer doesn't actually go into the bottle or into the keg. It goes to irrigate the plants that it takes to make the beer, the barley and the hops. And so if we wanted to take all of the water to Mars that we would need to irrigate enough crops to produce one pint of beer, it cost us $5.7 million. Now, if we want to put some astronauts on Mars, say we put four or six astronauts on Mars, and we want them to be able to uh, knock back a pint every night, we're talking about billions of dollars of beer. Now, NASA's budget is not too shabby, but it doesn't have a billion dollar beer fund. And so, we've got to find a different way to get beer on Mars. And actually, it turns out that we have one. And it comes in the form of a fancy equation called the Sabatier reaction. Yeah! And the short Sabatier figured out that in order to produce lots of useful things on Mars, all we have to do is bring hydrogen from Earth. Now, hydrogen is really light, the lightest element in the universe, it's also the most common element in the universe. So we don't have any worries about depleting the cosmic supply of hydrogen to make our beer. One atom of hydrogen weighs 18 times less than one molecule of water. And so we can compress a lot more hydrogen into our spacecraft. And so what we do is we take that hydrogen and we combine it with carbon dioxide. And we don't have to bring that from Earth because the atmosphere of Mars is mostly carbon dioxide. All we do is we go to Mars, we grab our bottle of hydrogen, and we crack a window. Bam! We mix them together. We just need to add a little energy. Energy that we can harvest from the sun by setting up solar panels out there on Mars. We already use solar panels to power some of our rovers driving around on the surface, so we know that this works. But when we do this, the result that we get are three of the most important things for explorers on Mars. The first is methane. It's a greenhouse gas here on Earth but it can also be used as rocket fuel. And if we send a bunch of astronauts to Mars, they're probably want, gonna wanna know that they can come home one day. And if they wanna come home, we've gotta give them a rocket to fly in and a bunch of fuel to fuel up that rocket. So we use methane. The next thing this reaction will give us is oxygen. Oxygen is really important because it turns out that if you can't breathe, you can't drink beer. <laughs> we want to make sure that our astronauts can drink as much beer as they'd like, so we want to make sure that they can breathe as much as they might like. And then finally, it produces water, what we need 300 pounds of to make one pint of beer. And so using our step-by-step -step method of putting things on Mars, we could create a mission something like this. We send a robotic factory to Mars to produce a bunch of methane, a bunch of water, and a bunch of oxygen. And once we know those tanks are full, then we can send our astronauts on what's an eight-month journey between planet Earth and Mars. And when they get there, they're probably going to want to call their moms at home and pitch a tent and all of that kind of stuff. But once that's out of the way, they can start brewing beer because we've already produced all of the water that they need. And so we've handled one of the four things we need to produce in order to make beer. It turns out that there's no way to get around bringing yeast from Earth. 
Unlike the gentleman in the back, we don't actually know of any yeast on Mars today. And so we're going to have to, we, we wouldn't want to risk it all on the fact that there might not be yeast on Mars. So let's bring a little with it. just takes a smidge to make some beer. And then for the grain and the hops, what we need to do is grow that on Mars. We're going to make authentic Martian beer here. This is no imported stuff. <laughs> and so the problem is, is that this is what the Martian soil looks like. It's not exactly what you'd call great growing material. Actually, some research suggests that plants on Mars could grow pretty well right in the Martian soil. We brought an Earth seed and put it in the Martian soil, it might grow pretty well. But it would also suck up a lot of really bad stuff out of the soil. Things like poisonous perchlorates, or bromine, or the heavy metal nickel. These are things that you wouldn't want in your diet, and you certainly wouldn't want in your beer. And so, at least for the foreseeable future, we're not in a place where we can just go start tilling the soil on Mars. We need another way to grow barley. And in this case, we also have the answer. It's weed. The same technique <laughs> that has allowed people all over America to grow weed in their garage and to allow us to grow barley on the surface of Mars. It's called hydroponics. And it works by replacing the soil with uh, Placing the soil with a liquid nutrient system. And NASA kind of envisioned how this might work. And it would look something like this. That's one fancy garage. And um, in this case, being on Mars would actually be an advantage because one of the tricks or struggles when you're growing something like barley hydroponically is that it can't self support itself without that soil to grab onto. But as Brianna mentioned earlier, the gravity on Mars is just a third of the gravity on Earth. And that means there's a lot less tugging that barley that hops back down so it can grow tall and it can grow strong. And so we've harvested the water out of the Martian atmosphere. We've grown hops and we've grown barley on the surface of Mars. We've brought a little yeast back from planet Earth. We're ready to brew that beer. And we can do that. We bring the beer making equipment, we pour it all together, we let it sit, we do all those fancy beer steps, and out you get a nice pint of beer. But I'm sure that you're all wondering about that question. How much would it cost to brew beer on Mars? The answer is we don't really know. We don't understand the technology that it would take. We don't know how many people we would need. We don't know how expensive it would be to build a rocket capable of carrying people to Mars. But after Looking into this for a while, I think it's fairly comfortable to say that a beer on Mars would probably cost more than this buck 33 bottle of Bud Light Lime and less than this diamond encrusted platinum bottle of tequila for three and a half million dollars. <laughs> so, when you look at it from that perspective, buying beer on Mars is a pretty damn good deal. Like, 